I've often thought about uh, or talked about sort of three phases to, let's call it, how technology and biology sort of merge. Um, and something I've been talking about for some time. I think there's sort of three phases. The first phase that we're in today is the wearable phase. We adorn ourselves with technology. And for the most part, it's for managing um, activity. That will change as the sensors become more sophisticated. We'll monitor things like glucose levels and heart rate and, and the heart rate of a fetus you know, uh, and a pregnant mother. Um, the sensors will only get more and more sophisticated and will help with disease prevention and so on. So today we're sort of in the wearable phase. Where I believe we go next is in the embeddable phase, where we embed technology into the body. And we do some of it today. I mean, we, we embed pacemakers, for example. We embed artificial retinas, artificial cochlear implants, and so on. So we've already sort of begun that, although it's quite early on. And the technology that we embed today is fairly call it rudimentary by tomorrow's standards. The third, and we'll, we'll come back to that, but the third phase is a phase I call replaceables, in that I don't think we simply stop at embeddables. I think we move on and we move past that where um, technology will become so good that ultimately we may replace parts of our body with, call it artificial technology. Uh, it could be neural implants for um, so you don't forget things as you get older. It could be an artificial eye so that you can, uh, your eyesight doesn't ever go bad. Imagine if someone said to you, look, here's an artificial eye that we can embed in you. We take your perfectly good biological eye out, but here's a better one that gives you um, perhaps zoom vision. Perhaps we give you infrared so you can see at night you know, when you drive. Uh, it will never go bad because um, you know, you don't have any uh, glaucoma issues or retinal degeneration, that type of thing. Uh, and technology only gets better, so maybe there's another version next year we give you you know, I 2.0, that type of thing. So, um, or perhaps you're an athlete or you're in the military. Um, instead of a simply wearing an exoskeleton, perhaps we replace perfectly functioning limbs with an artificial limb because now as a baseball pitcher, you can pitch faster. As a military uh, person, you can carry a heavier pack or run more, so on and so forth. Uh, or perhaps you're in the medical field, you're a surgeon, and you need better dexterity in your, in your hands. You're a fighter pilot, what have you, and you need a, a neural connection to the plane. So I think a future where technology and biology sort of merge uh, is definitely one that will happen. To what extent, we'll see. I don't think anyone truly knows um, whether or not we have billions of sort of nanobots in our bloodstreams um, fighting cancer, fighting disease, fixing things. Uh, we'll see. Um, there's been a lot of advances of late where um, we're starting to create artificial life. And it might be that we don't go down the, the call it the electronic route with nanobots, but rather we figure out how to harness um, something that evolution has figured out how to do over billions of years. And instead we modify um, life forms perhaps to do some of those same types of things. So whether it's sort of nanobots and technology or um, perhaps uh, modifying bacteria or artificial life, what have you, to do that, I think I do subscribe to the belief that with Ray that there will be some sort of technology embedded in us that will help to, to increase life and repair things at the cellular level. I think it's um, arguably many decades out. Um, there was a, uh, a recent story I was reading um, or just refreshed myself on about uh, in 2006, these European researchers had developed a chip that they could essentially grow or meld um, neurons with, uh, um, brain cells with. And uh, they could pass information between the chip and the neuron and vice versa. So, so sort of very rudimentary brain machine interface, if you will. But now that was back in 2006 and it's now 2017. So that was arguably at least a decade ago. And really not much has changed since. So I think it's perhaps overly optimistic to say it's gonna happen, let's say by 2030. Um, it could, I mean, technology grows at exponential rate. We know that. Um, I think realistically, it's, it's a few decades even past that. I, I think we'll see many advances of technology that we do embed in the body in the coming decades. But this notion of sort of nanobots in the bloodstream, I, I tend to think that's a little further out, but um, we'll see. I mean, you know, technology often surprises people. Things happen a lot faster than people expect. Um, keep in mind that you know, 2030 is only 
12, 13 years from now. So I think that's highly optimistic. I think realistically it's sort of 2050. And one of the things I said earlier on is that um, humans often get in their own way um, because of religion or culture, philosophical or political concerns. Um, I think even if the technology existed today where we could embed or inject, let's say, nanobots in the bloodstream, all these hurdles we'd have to go through, uh, whether it's FDA clearance or clinical trials, all these other things we have to go through first, that alone would take a decade. So um, I think I think it's an inevitability that it will happen. I think what's at debate would be the time frame that it would happen.